Howdy and welcome. Today we're tearing down the bottom end of a 2JZ GTE and I'm going to take you along for the ride. So uh, let's get going. The first thing that you need to make sure of is that you drain all your fluids. So one little trick I learned is to take the oil pan off first because this has a little bit of oil left in it. So uh, instead of just turning the engine over right away and having this all drip out uh, the ports up here on the deck, we can just take this off and we'll take that oil out with the pan. So I'm going to get these bolts out and we'll take the pan off. There it is. I'm going to open the coolant block drain on the side here. Any more coolant? There is more coolant. There was some more coolant in there. Oh, it's all over me. Fantastic. All right, we're gonna keep turning her over here. All right, with everything flipped upside down, it's time to take off the oil uh, pickup here. So it's just uh, 10 millimeter and then two 10 millimeters. Um, on the other side of the pickup. And now I'm going to take off the windage tray, which is just a bunch of um, 10 millimeters and it'll pop right off. I'm also going to take off the oil level sensor, which is four 10 millimeters down here and the whole uh, system just comes right out. And at this point, sorry for the, the noise, but at this point, it's time to take off the girdle, which is this whole bottom section, or you can call it the upper oil pan. It's a bunch of 12 millimeters, uh, and I believe these are 14s that you're just gonna zap out. And this whole bottom part of the engine is going to be removed, and then we'll have access to the crank and the pistons and all that good stuff. So we're gonna uh, get this puppy off. just pop right off here. Ugh, it is not popping right off. Okay. The uh, girdle is coming off. There it is. At this point, the oil pump is ready to come off. So there's just a bunch of 12 millimeter bolts holding this onto the block. You take those out and this thing, seriously, it'll just come right off. All right, so it's just about time to take the pistons out, and the first thing that I have to do is make sure that they are labeled so they can go back in the correct order that I took them out in. So I'm gonna flip this over, label the pistons, and then we can get about taking them out. All right, so we're gonna take out piston one here. The um, bolts on the rod and the rod cap is a 12 millimeter 12 point and uh, we're gonna loosen them about halfway and then use a dead blow to break it, break it loose. Hi, Mom. Talking to yourself? Talking to the camera. There we go. Hard to tell, but the bearings look to be in really good shape. There's our first piston. Yeah, I'm really happy about that, and I'm gonna keep going with the other ones now. All right, the pistons are out. So now we can remove our rear main seal, which is right here, this whole assembly, not just the, uh, the seal. It's held on by six 10 millimeter bolts and some silicone, and um, I went ahead and loosened these bolts before I put it on the engine stand because it's kind of hard to get to. So I'm going to take those bolts out now and then we can remove this whole assembly. And there you go. That's your rear main seal assembly. All right, guys, it's time to take our crankshaft out. This is a monumental moment. It's going to be huge. So these are our main bearing caps right here. And we're going to loosen everything very kind of... Uh, uh, incrementally. So we're going to do like a quarter of a turn on all of them and then another quarter of a turn until they become loose and then we can take the main bearing caps out. Now the only thing we have to take note of is that there are some thrust bearings right here, uh, right in the right in the center. That's what keeps your crank from moving uh, forward and backward laterally. Uh, so when we take it all apart we have to make sure that uh, we get each of these. There are four of them so we'll take those out. But I'm going to loosen these uh, a quarter of a turn. 
take these suckers out and if uh, if they aren't coming loose a little trick that I learned off of YouTube is that you can just stick the bolts in and use the bolts as a leverage point to kind of wiggle the the main bearing cap off and it'll come right off so we got our first one coming off here our bearings look pristine like nowhere at all this is this is amazing for such an old engine that is stellar so Make sure you keep these in the right order, even though they are labeled. All right, we are at number four, which is where the thrust washers are. And um, you gotta be really careful that you get all the thrust washers. So I'll show you here. So sorry for the lack of visibility here, but here is the number four uh, main cap. And you can see there's these little kind of goldish looking tabs that are sticking up and those are your thrust washers or thrust bearings or whatever they're called and they're kind of like half circles and there's uh two on the top here on either side and then there's two on the bottom on either side so they make a full circle so when we take off this main bearing cap we have to make sure that we get all of the thrust washers out uh with it so i'm going to try to be extra careful on this one because uh you can't wiggle it back and forth Maybe I can use a little bit of leverage. Whoop, 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 whoop. Oh uh, yeah, so, okay, so I just used a big old flathead to kind of, there's a little uh, tabs on the side that you can kind of get the screwdriver under. And we're gonna see if I can just wiggle this guy out. So, just for all you out there that are wondering, here, oh, can you see it? Okay, for all you wondering, these are your thrust washers. They go on either side of the bearing cap making sure you can see this here. Uh, and they have a flat side and they have a side with two grooves on it and the grooves face out on either side. Ugh. So just make sure that you keep tabs on these guys because they, they are able to move around. They're not stuck on there. This is the moment of truth. Will the crankshaft come out? And I'm also not strong, I've got noodle arms, so this could be a bit difficult. What's gonna happen? Our thrust bearings, uh, I've rotated them around with the crankshaft so that we could, we could just remove these and not have to worry about them later. And here they are. Oh, if I drop this, I'm gonna be mega sad. Okay, boys. Ugh, it's heavy. Oh, it, all, it almost came out, I'm just not strong enough. I can't do it. Okay, so I'm going to have to get another another hand in here to help me. You can't write me. What's up? You can't write one, two, three. Oh, sorry. The crankshaft is out! Woo! All right, now it's time to take out the bearings. It's these uh, metal inserts right here. Try to push one out. Here we go. So that is just what we're going to take out. And then the last thing we've got is the oil squirters, which are down there. Should be really easy to remove. And then this block is pretty much ready to go off to the machine shop, which is why this was getting torn down in the first place. One last thing I forgot was to take off the knock sensors. There's one up front and one back here. We're just going to take them off really, really quick. And what these are, are like little microphones that listen for knock inside the engine. These are very important. And the 2J has two, which is really, really nice. This 2JZ has been torn down and I will make another video when we are putting everything uh, back together. But until then, this is going off to the machine shop along with the head to get hot tanked and decked and pressure checked and all that good stuff. So thanks for sticking around and I'll catch you in the next one.